Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out Townsman, A Kingdom Rebuilt. This is a game that you can find on Steam for roughly 20 bucks. This is a casual city builder of sorts. Actually quite fun. I spent the last two hours off camera giving it a go. As far as what's available in this game, there's a campaign. Mainly it's a tutorial. The game will guide you every step of the way, and I've completed five out of the six campaign missions here. And for the most part, that's how I learned the game. If you're going to jump into this game for the first time, highly recommend checking out the campaign because even though this is a casual-esque city builder, there's a lot of things going on in the background and hidden in menus that you normally wouldn't look for. So uh, definitely recommend checking out the campaign first. But hey, you do what you want to do at your game. There are scenarios that you can play. Uh, basically, they're just scripted quests that you have to do. Um, my favorite mode so far is the Endless mode. This is where you can choose your map, like Riverbank, Plateau, Island, Vast Hills, the Falls, and you can see on the right-hand side map size and difficulty. Um, I personally am a fan of the maps that are medium to large sized and have an easy difficulty. That way you can just relax, you can build. Now, my only complaint with this mode is that whenever you start a game in Endless, it asks you, do you want to enable bandits? I personally like the bandits. They will attack you every so often and rob you of resources unless you build a barracks and a guard tower that covers the range of the buildings that they're attacking. Unfortunately, the bandits attack you right out of the gate. So, and these barracks structures and the guard tower structures are quite expensive. So it's an uphill battle trying to keep your people fed and getting the resources that you need to keep going because you can't fend yourself off. You can't defend yourself. I wish there was a way in endless mode to enable bandits, but maybe after 20 or 30 minutes of playing, or maybe you can enable them manually whenever you're ready to take them on, that kind of thing. That's my only complaint with endless mode so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you the options menu. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, pause the video if you want to see it in greater detail, but lots of sliders, screen resolution, V-Sync, there's key bindings, but to tell you the truth, I'm using mouse and keyboard, mouse mainly for everything. There is controller support, but again, I don't even have that plugged in, and then there's just some information about the game. All right, so I'm going to throw you into one of the campaign missions. I'll show you my endless game in a minute, but... The campaign will give you a better view of all of the different buildings that are in the game because these campaign missions, they will build everything for you um, at the beginning of every scenario. So um, you don't have to start over from scratch every single time. It takes you through a story. Your empire will grow over the course of these campaign missions. The only thing I don't like is that it doesn't keep what you've built. So let's say that you've got a really great supply chain. You build all these townhouses and all the like, and then you move on to the next campaign mission. Those buildings might be gone because the scenario is scripted or the campaign mission is scripted to start you with these specific buildings. So what you build in one campaign mission may not always carry over to the next one. And if they do carry over, they're not in the same spot that you've built them in. So I'm going to go ahead and start one up, and then I'll uh, take it from there. Okay, so here we are. I may get interrupted from time to time. Yeah. Again, this is uh, campaign level 6, so I'm going to be receiving scripted messages every now and again. So what in the world is going on here? Well... Like I said, lots of different buildings to construct. On the left-hand side of the screen is your alert menu. Various things are happening. You can read about them here. Upper left-hand corner is an XP bar. This XP bar does carry over from both Campaign and Endless. So, no matter what you're doing, 
this thing will level up and then you'll be able to research better technologies and then your future playthroughs will be a little bit easier. In starting now dot. Ooh. I don't know if Top middle, free workers right here. Uh, it says one right now. 81% happiness that's broken up over like food and clothing and tools, that kind of thing. Um, you've got storage space here next to that. You've got various food sources like bread, fish, and meat. You've got gold that you're going to be earning as you collect taxes from your townhouses and your and your housing buildings. You'll lose money as you're building things or if you get robbed by the bandits. Prestige is like premium currency that you're going to be com earning by completing quests. This can be spent to build certain decorations and to fast build certain structures. Bottom right hand corner, you've got this encyclopedia of sorts. There's also a tab along the top. You can save your game settings, key bindings, all that jazz. Below that is your radius menus. Like this is what my current guard towers are covering right now. Um, there's my barracks. There's water towers that put out fires, that kind of thing. Next one down is my demolish menu. If I want to demolish something, I click on it in the environment. It turns red. And if I confirm my changes to the right with this check mark, then it'll be deleted. So for example, if I want to get rid of these things to the left, select them in red, hit check mark, done. Deleted. Next one down, uh, this is just like an event. It's basically a, a listing of all of the things that you're seeing on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, next one down, this is the bread and butter of all of your information. You've got your quest log here, main quests and optional quests. Uh, you're going to be earning prestige and experience as you do these things. Another reason maybe to play the campaign because uh, before Endless so that you can earn experience, level up, and then your Endless mode will be slightly easier when you actually get into it. But again, you play what you want to do, or you do what you want to do. Um, this is your resource area. Um, from here, you'll be able to trade resources. If you have a marketplace, your merchant will stop by every now and again. You, And this is a little confusing. Let's say I wanted to trade. Let's find something I've got in excess. Um, how about wheat? So if I click on wheat. Now, the way this works is if you drag it to the left, you're selling it. If you drag it to the right, you're buying it. The up green arrow is how much you're selling it for. The down red arrow is how much you're buying it for. So if I bring this from 30 to 25 like I just did, I'm going to be losing 5 wheat. And then on the bottom right hand corner, I'm gaining 20 gold. And the reason for that is 5 that I'm losing times 4 in green is 20. 5 times 4 is 20. So I'm going to accept that. Now merchants can only... Uh, be you can only sell 100 units of anything so um just be wary of that you have to wait for the next merchant if you sell all 100 units you can also buy from him as well but at greater cost but hey if you need something in a pinch you can do that uh next one over is overview uh, you've got needs desires tax rate productivity Speaking of taxes, uh, you can drag the tax rate to the left and right. That will affect general happiness, productivity, and chance of strike. Um, like I said, lots. even though this is a casual city builder, there's a lot of things going on in the background uh, that you are going to take some time to get used to. Uh, research menu. Uh, you can see what I've researched so far. Lots of things to go at this point in time. Um... Oh, I might want to start research. Uh, more warehouse storage capacity. Sure, it's going to take five minutes to complete. There's also finances, population, towns guard. Next one over, you can see statistics like influences, town information, uh, buildings that you have. You can upgrade them from one star to two star to three stars. Upgrading them is good, but they also require more maintenance uh, materials. And then finally, your combat tab, overview of like combat power, barracks coverage, guard tower coverage, military buildings, that kind of thing. So, uh, like I said, there's a lot of resource chaining going on here. Um, so, 
here's your build menu bottom right hand corner as well different tabs for all of these things first one's infrastructure this is for housing townhouses large townhouse warehouse you can see how much it costs down here infirmaries fire watchtowers for putting out fires um, resource extraction mines farms wheat fields wheat fields sheep pastures and herb gardens are extensions of the farm so think like anno uh the anno video game series where if you put down a structure you can add on fields to that building that's what this wheat field sheep pasture and herb garden lets you do the game, whenever you build a farm, it starts you off with one wheat field, but if you want a sheep pasture or herb, herb garden, you have to build it yourself. Same thing with the oast house. You need hop fields, vineyard, you need great plantations for that. So these, these buildings go hand in hand with each other. Well provides water, fisherman hut, hunter's cabin, uh, windmills, bakeries. Uh, I don't want to read all of them off to you because there's so many, but I think you get the idea. Okay, so, um, your soldiers have entered combat. Okay, yeah, so from time to time, like I said, these bandits will attack you. There's no RTS, there's no, you can't actually control your soldiers. If you're in range, or if these towers are in range of the bandits, they will automatically attack. Yeah, and they'll, they'll automatically attack buildings. Your soldiers will go out and attack and try and fend them off. There's a lot of information here. Lots of buildings to look at. This thing, um, what's wrong with you? Okay, so every building has durability. Um, if you go and click on the building, go to actions, there's repair, demolish workers, buildings. You can spend money to repair. You can also build, I believe, a carpenter's workshop. He'll go around repairing buildings for you automatically. Okay. So yeah, obviously this is the hardest campaign level of them all. So what I'm going to do now is actually jump into my uh, endless mode so that I'm not being interrupted constantly by scripted messages. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we are. In endless mode, you will get quests that pop up from time to time. They're completely optional. You don't have to do them, but they will give you prestige and experience points should you complete them. Uh, some of them are timed. That's one thing I don't like, timed quests, but again, with optional being optional, you don't have to do it. There's no penalty for not doing it. So at the moment, I've got... Um, you start off with basically this castle in the middle... Maybe a couple of houses and that's it. It takes a couple of tries to get the right build order from the beginning. Because if you focus on the wrong thing, you'll end up running out of food. Uh, so I recommend right out of the gate building a fisherman's hut. And you can assign people to these structures. There's Putting it on the ZZZ here means that no one will work that building. You can assign more people to those buildings, but you have to upgrade the building first. There's a separate tab for that. But I need the appropriate research before I can actually do that. Okay. Now, I do have bandits enabled. So, crap is going to hit the fan every now and again. Uh, let's go ahead and sell some things I don't need. Uh, I'm going to keep my food. Wheat. I've got... Eh. Doesn't look like I can sell anything. Actually, i got plenty of wood. I'll sell some of it. There we go. And there's a couple of buildings that need repaired. Go ahead and do that. Now, for the most part, you'll continuously earn gold as you play, but there are some structures that require gold. So if you see a sharp decrease in the amount of gold that you have in your treasury, it's not because there's taxes or anything like that or maintenance. It's just your building just took all of that money in order to be built. 
All right, I'm going to fast forward time here. And look, the, the research that I started and the campaign carried over into Endless here. It's actually quite cool. All right, now this message um, saying that my uh, one building was filled to capacity. If you click on your castle, uh, you'll be able to enable these haulers. I'm going to go ahead and enable a few right now. And these guys will carry things around and, and pick things up at buildings. Each building has its own personal stock or, or storage, like this meat, for example, 20 out of 20. Or 20 out of 40, rather. When this hits 40, nothing else can be produced there. So having a couple of haulers available will move that stuff from the building in question to storage. One thing I don't like is that in order to view your storage, you have to click on your castle. There's no... So some of the information in this game is sort of hidden in menus. And sometimes it's annoying to try and find it. But uh, it's a minor complaint. Okay, so we're about to be attacked by bandits. Um, I did build a barracks, so let's see if I can build that guard tower. 200, okay, I need 350 gold. I don't have it. Um, looks like I also need some tools. I don't have it. Well, I'll start, I'll start construction and hope for the best here. I want to try and cover everything, so how about that? Now what will happen here, they'll deliver as much as possible. Like if I have the wood planks and the stone, they'll deliver that. But then building construction will halt until I have the rest of what I need. I could also spend prestige. Uh, I need 25 though in order to insta-build it. But as I deliver more goods to this guard tower, that will actually go down. The auto cost will go down. So after the wood planks and stone are delivered, I might only need, say, 10 prestige instead of 25. Which is kind of cool. Alright, bandits are raiding my town. Big surprise. And this is going to happen in Endless until you get going and get a barracks all set up and, and the guard towers all set up. Yeah, I lost some resources there. Okay, wood planks are delivered. I just need stone. See, now the cost is now down to 16. I could auto-build it now if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. Alright, merchant has arrived. Let's sell more things. Prices will fluctuate. Um, as If you sell a whole bunch of stone the previous time he was here, for example, then um, the prices will be worse for you next time around. So it helps to alternate between what goods you're selling. I'm going to sell a little bit of bread. I don't want to lose too much of my food, but I do want some money, so. Alright, I do have a lot of wheat. Although, there are seasons in this game, and winter is coming up. So I'm going to save my wheat so that um, you cannot grow wheat in the winter time. So definitely want to store it up for winter. I've got two people working on that right now, actually. I could assign one to, actually I'll assign them to wool whenever winter comes around, and then I can sell some of that excess wool. I don't have a tailor or anything like that, so those raw wool resources will just go to waste. They'll sit there. All right, so now I need 10 tools. Um, actually, I might be able to buy them. Oh, they're expensive. Ugh. All right, if I buy six... I'm down to eight gold. I've got these extra skins, but they're only going for one apiece. I might as well just get rid of them. I always get more. 
And then... How many more tools can I get? Two more. Alright, so I'm broke. Pretty sure I got most of the tools that I need. I'm short two tools, I believe. Alright, so now I can spend three prestige if I want to finish this. I think I will. And now I've got a worker working as a guard here. I can assign another one if I had him. So, I, at this point, if you need to bring in more workers, you need to build more housing, obviously. Also, more housing brings in more tax income. I'm going to go ahead and build... You can build large townhouses if you want, but you need... There are certain building requirements needed for some of these advanced buildings. Some of the advanced buildings also need things like tools. So... I'm going to stick with the easier to build buildings for right now. Uh, we'll just throw this. Uh, these fences are a pain. Let's get rid of them. There we go. And now I have no one available to construct it. So I'm going to remove someone as a hauler. That'll give me one free worker. Click on that building that I want to construct, and then click on this construction thing here, and he'll go and build that. And I need to repair this, but have no money. That's wonderful. Well, I completed a quest, though. Guard tower coverage, 60% out of 60%. Bandit sighted. Well, hopefully my, my lone guard here can do the trick. I can always assign a second person if I need to. Your soldiers have lost the battle. Oh, that's great. What was the point of building you then if you're going to lose battles? Ooh. The town is ablaze? Ugh. Holy cow. Well, luckily we've got... We've got a fire watchtower here. Hopefully he can put everything out. Oh, and there's a fire over here. That's lovely. Great. Wonderful. Out of range of... I, I, I could try and build a fire watchtower over here, but I don't think I'm going to. Maybe I'll just let that burn down. Like I said, the bandits, if you're gonna... If you're gonna enable them, expect an uphill battle. I just, I wish there was a way to enable them later in the endless mode. That's just, I just wish that was possible. Alright, I can't afford it. Don't tell me I don't have... And there's no way to pause this either. Like, there's a pause button, but it won't actually pause. What's the radius? Okay, it's in it's in range. Oh, it's... Oh! So this barracks is going to be destroyed unless... Okay, I'm going to have to maybe quick build it. That is so annoying. Okay, fire watchtower. We'll put that. Uh, can I put it? That might work. I'm trying to save both. Alright, let's see if that works. And then do I have enough prestige to quick build it? I do. Alright, I'm going to remove someone from hauling. Put them as a firewatch tower thingy. Do your job, please. Smoldering building start. Oh, great. Well, I lost that fire or the uh, fishing lodge over here. I can always rebuild it later, I suppose. Probably repair that. I've got money now. Hmm. 
Is anyone going to put that fire out? Don't tell me this thing is too far away. If, if you tell me this thing is too far away, so help me. No, it's in range. Oh, no, again. Ugh! Oh, crap. So my windmill is outside of the range of both of these towers. <sighs> Lovely. I may have to rebuild it. Luckily, winter is coming around, so I'm not going to be making uh, any flower at the moment anyway. And there's more bandits. Well, my townhouse is finished. Let's go ahead and assign another worker to that, to the guard tower. And I guess let's try and build another one of these. Maybe we'll put it here. All right, we'll rush construction on this with two people instead of just the one. Can we... Uh, we need one more prestige. <laughs> we need one more prestige to build that. With a quick build. Merchant is here. Lucky for us. Do we need anything? Uh, doesn't look like it. Meat, bread. Okay, so we're good on food. We got plenty of wheat. That's good. Let's go ahead and sell these skins off. We don't need them. Eh. Looks like we're low on water, which I'm surprised. I'm going to go ahead and buy some water just to have it. Like maybe three. Hopefully that's enough. Uh, stone... My mine collapsed due to fire, so I need to keep my stone. Uh, let's maybe sell some of these planks. There we go. Alright, this is partially built, so I'm wondering if we can prestige it. Yes, we can. I'm going to build that immediately. Oh, it didn't matter. Okay, well... <laughs> it's... One thing after another in this. Quest completed. All fires have been extinguished and the town is safe again. Research unlocked. Alright, so I have to rebuild this windmill. Luckily, it's not too expensive. I'm going to need a lot of gold. 450 gold for that. I'm going to wait until I actually have it in case I have to repair buildings instead. So at this point, I may have to buy flour... And let's get our haulers back to doing what they're doing. But you can see... You can see the potential here. I I have a few minor gripes with this game, but... It's addicting. And it's quite fun. So, do I recommend this game at the $20 price tag? If you like this kind of game, yeah. But be prepared to get frustrated over little things as they come up. Like I said, some of the information that you're looking for might be hidden in a menu somewhere. Um, enabling bandits, there's no custom custom ability there. Like you can't you can't enable bandits to come later on. And the endless mode, no, they come right away. They mess you up, and it, it, it makes the game ten times harder. I might actually just restart without the bandits because. Um, just because of how difficult and frustrating this is turning out to be. But overall, as a game, it's not bad. And I would definitely recommend it to anyone that enjoys city building. Um, if you guys want to see more gameplay, let me know. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.